you put the question out on Twitter, which team will end the season with a better record, Oklahoma or Notre Dame? I'll let you lead us off. It's your question. Oh, uh, Kyler Murray was 2018. Jalen Hurts 2019. Uh, man, I don't know. Like, if you asked ask this three this weeks point. ago, it would be a totally know, different I, response. I, you know what? I put it out there thinking you and I, you know, we're going to have fun with this one. But now that I'm thinking about it out loud, I don't even know if Dylan Gabriel is going to be the dude against Texas. And I know that Texas smells blood in the water. The game sold out. I don't know that the offensive line. No, Wanye Morris had a doggone sling on against Texas Christian. Jalen Redmond doesn't play well. We're screwed. I don't know that I can trust the secondary at all. Billy Bowman's hurt. I don't feel good about this. And now I got Brent Venables acknowledging that Nick Evers is going to travel and he has taken snaps, but not telling me who's going to be the starter. I Notre Dame doesn't play a conference schedule. They play a quasi-ACC schedule. There's still Clemson left to play. They got BYU on Saturday. They do. Yeah? Is that what that is? They, no, I'm just saying they do. They play BYU. Okay, I thought I, I was no, going to no, say, no. did I screw up the schedule? No, no, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm at a loss on this one because Kansas is good. West Virginia was good enough, and then prayers up for C.J. Donaldson. I want him to be able to play the rest of the year. All right, let me put it this way. If Oklahoma gets to nine wins, I am happy. I am happy. I'm so overjoyed, and that includes the bowl game. I don't know if Notre Dame's going to get to nine wins, so I'm going to go Oklahoma. What do you think? Okay, so you're saying Oklahoma's going to finish nine and three? That's how it feels. Who's going to be the loss? It feels like, oh, man, uh, Texas. Texas. Te- Texas. They're due. They're so due. Like, you you thought, think about it. The last two years, we pulled a rabbit out of our keister. Okay? Like, we, 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 should, we should have never won those football games. We benched the starting quarterback and lived to tell about it. Nobody does that. We had four overtimes. We had missed field goals. We playing in a COVID year. Nah, man. Like, and then I you still got Oklahoma State, so that could be four. Iowa State's not bad. Kansas is good. Texas Christian already molly whopped us. West Virginia, you should beat Texas Tech. I can't call it. We're just we're this is not good. This is not this. The ceiling is on the floor is what it feels like. But I'm also a moment-to-moment Oklahoma fan, and I'm not putting on my analyst hat right now. It's tough, Tyler. Like, I just. Okay, so I, I get that. I'm a little bit confused because you are you don't seem very confident, but you're also saying that they're going to lose a game and then win out. So a little bit confusing. Our first response uh, comes from Absent Dad, who says Oklahoma. Um, understandable. Probably an Oklahoma fan because his bio says Just Boomer says Sooner. I yeah, love his that. bio says uh, Boomer Sooner. But let's get to our next one. This one comes from Andrew Rogers, who says, uh, Notre Dame, OU is simply sliding way down. It happens sometimes. Which sort of brings you to my point right now, is if you had asked this question after week two when Notre Dame had lost to Marshall and Oklahoma and looked really impressive, it was a no-brainer that Oklahoma would finish with a better record. But if you look at it now, Notre Dame – Dare I say, hot, <laughs> back-to-back wins, which is sad that I get excited about that now. But that's what happens when you lose to Marshall in Week 2. I think Notre Dame is going to finish with a better record, and I don't think they're going to get to nine wins either. I think Notre Dame is going to finish 8-4. and four. I think they beat BYU this weekend. They've got a tough, a sneaky tough game against Syracuse on the road at whatever, uh, or at the place formerly known as the Carrier Dome. And then the following week, they host Clemson. Go ahead, chalk that up as a loss. Now, they end the season... Um, here in Los Angeles against USC. And even though USC is a top 10 team, and even though Chris, who's operating the camera right now, is giving me the fight on, um, look, if Notre Dame can contain Ohio State's passing game, I don't see why they couldn't do the same to USC. And Ohio State's defense is a whole lot better than USC. So I think Notre Dame, if they, they lose to Clemson, they'll probably drop one between Syracuse and USC. I think they'll win the rest. It's a little bit easier of a road compared to Oklahoma. So I think Notre Dame finishes eight and four, 
Oklahoma, that road ahead, man, is tough. Kansas is no gimme. There's not there's not one game left on the schedule for Oklahoma that I think you can chalk up as an easy win, whereas there's like a few on Notre Dame's schedule, like Navy and UNLV. So I think it's going to be close. Uh, I'm not going to be super proud of it if it, they get to 8-4 and four and we're – that I get to brag about that because they win one more game than Oklahoma. But I'm sick with my Irish. I'm saying Notre Dame. You know, we don't have Marshall on the schedule, so there's that. I know. I'm you saying know, we're going to have easy we're, wins. We're, we're, we're okay on that one. And the teams that we're losing to turn out to be good. So there's that. Uh, we play in a conference. You know, we Irrelevant. have allegiance to someone. <laughs> Pointless. And you know what? I feel better about Oklahoma getting to nine wins than I do about USC selling out the Coliseum if they're undefeated when they play Notre Dame. I'm saying Texas because I'm also trying to reverse jinx myself into saying, okay, cool. I feel good about Oklahoma beating Texas this weekend. And then if we beat Texas this weekend, we have beaten a team that was a one-point loss to the number one team in the country according to, to the AP and also, by all rights, should have beaten Alabama on the 40 acres, and it's as topsy-turvy as, you know, you're fighting Irish. So I think a lot is going to be said about what happens this weekend. And now that I have been challenged, I'm coming up with all these ways in which Oklahoma can win nine games and even run the table because, damn it, it's our league. We ain't left it yet. All right? I like Lance Leipold. Love Lance Leipold. Think the world of Lance Leipold. They got one loss, and it's got to beat Oklahoma. That's all right. That's fine, too. Baylor, that's that. I I got no love for Baylor. Oklahoma State, we owe. We we owe. Iowa State, you ain't been good to the last four years, and all of a sudden you got your big britches on like you want to do something. Try it. You know, Texas Tech, feel real good about beating Texas, going, get, hey, get the same L that they got from Kansas State from us. You know? All right. You know, like, it, it, it it's weird. I'm a Leo. I'm a fire sign. I don't like to admit any of that, but apparently, if my if my team gets challenged by a Notre Dame fan <laughs> who happens to be my lead producer, then I feel much braver about saying nine, ten wins. How does that feel to you, Tyler? It feels pretty good. Before we go here, because I know we're wrapping up, Cat, I want you to fly the tweet. RJ, I don't know if you saw this. I tweeted right before the show. I said the answer is oh, simple. Yeah. No, I, you caught it. I got you. And I got you. I also uh, <laughs> I got a little bit. I got, I got a little bit under – it got under my skin, but I got a reply in there. For anybody listening to the show or watching the show, go ahead. Check out my reply. <laughs> I should put copyright underneath that, but, you know, we'll save that for another day. Okay, that is going to do it for this episode of the number one college football show. My thanks, as always, to my mailbag partner and our lead producer on the number one college football show, Tyler Wojak. Tyler, thanks, man. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.